Hey guys, welcome back to another Xenoblade 3 analysis. This one is going to be a little interesting. We're delving into the nightmarish hellscape that is Xenoblade Twitter. No, actually, the Xenoblade Twitter. It's not too bad, though. Ever since the reveal, the official Xenoblade Twitter has periodically updated us with information pertaining to the elements seen in the trailer. All of it is actually very relevant, and gives us a greater understanding of the structure of Ionios as a whole, as well as characters we've been privy to see so far. So, I'm just going to go through it for you all and see what tidbits we can learn. Before we get started, I just want to thank the operators of the Xenoblade English Twitter account, run by Aegis Floral and Rogue Translating. They've done a fantastic job translating all this info, and I think I can speak for all of us when I say we really appreciate it. Just a clarification though, some of the terms may change when they're officially localized. Alright, let's get reading. So first up are the character profiles. Each one has this really cool image of the character art, along with their name in Japanese written on the bottom. Noah's profile reveals that his Japanese VA is Ryohei Arai, who you may know as Charlotte from One Piece and Ed and Licht from East 8. Noah is revealed to be 18 as well. Despite his slim physique, he boasts quite impressive physical power. Doesn't his appearance and stance remind you of an awesome samurai? Based on this brief explanation and what we've seen of him fighting, I think he's going to have a very interesting combat style, and I certainly hope his arts reflect that. This translation says that he's Keve's departure, which I just imagine is Offseer. This also seems to imply that each nation has one Offseer, which makes both Noah and Mio seem much more important comparatively than we may have thought. His experience with the deaths of many friends through war has led him to question why there must even be fighting between two warring sides. I wonder if Noah is going to be the first one questioning the status quo, or if it'll be a lingering thought in the minds of all the characters. Either way, I'm excited to see where this game's philosophy goes. Next is Mio, who we really don't learn all that much about. She is 19, which makes her the oldest party member. Again, we get the wording that implies that her nation of Agnes just has her as an offseer, rather than a group. Mio is voiced by Minami Suda, who has done all of this. This last part here is pretty generic, and I couldn't glean anything interesting from it. The sacred sound of the two Offseer songs for the departed is beautiful and somewhat sorrowful. What's interesting about this is that being an Offseer seems to be connected to these flutes specifically. We had a feeling that this was the case, but it's good to get confirmation. What I want to know is, what is happening here? If Noah and Mio are the only offseers, then why are all these particles appearing during the concert? Of course the color is different, but it's still a question nonetheless. My thought has been that this is maybe ether of some sort, but who knows. Kosuke Tanabe voices Lanz, and he has done a lot of mainstream anime. Also, Lanz is 18, which is super weird because I was under the impression he was a machina, as many others were. Maybe he is in a machina? Or maybe a Homs in a machina did the horizontal tango and voila! New species! It reveals he's reckless because he's been friends with Noah and Yuni since they were children. He'll protect his friends even at the cost of his own life. Sounds like someone else we know. Except the dying part, Ryan wants to protect his friends and live. Next is Senna, who is also 18 and voiced by Miyuki Sato, who voiced young Noctis in the FF15 anime and the game itself. Something interesting is that they point out she's able to use such a large weapon, but she's a blade, so that's sort of not interesting. I've seen some people speculate that her hammer is her blade weapon, but I just don't think so. This symbol here, which looks like an Ouroboros by the way, is on multiple weapons, so I think that these were likely made elsewhere. I also want to point out that Senna and Mio are blades, and their ages seem... odd. I don't know if you would consider blade ages to be stagnant, so Mio is always 19 and Senna is always 18, but who knows. This post also points out the blue glow in her hair, and that's definitely teasing a relation to Bridget. It also says that she enjoys muscle training and is cheerful and energetic, but shy and lacking confidence around others. Yuni is revealed to be 18 here, but it's in a separate post from these because of Twitter's character limit. Again. How is a high Entia that looks like this 18? For context, Teelan is 43 in Future Connected. This is not normal. I've heard some people say that the clocks mentioned in the trailer equalize everyone's ages, and I guess that's an okay theory, but it really isn't based on anything substantial. We'll just have to see what the explanation is later. Anyway, she is voiced by Megumi Han, who's been in a ton of anime and games like 
Yu-Gi-Oh, Little Witch Academia, and Guilty Gear. The post also says the wings on her head seem familiar. Oh, huh? Do you think? I wonder who else has wings on their head. Yuni has a sharp tongue, which makes her come off as rude. Yuni is rather good at academics. She respects Noah and has a close relationship with Lons, where they can speak freely. She has a strong sense of responsibility to her friends above all else. I think the most jarring thing here is that she specifically has a close relationship with Lons. I was surprised to hear this, mostly because I thought Noah, Lons, and Yuni would have a similar dynamic to Shulk, Ryan, and Fiora. While I don't know if this is implied to be a romantic type of closeness, being closer with Lons rather than Noah does pique my interest. Also, someone tell Anella back off, she's mine. Ryuhei Kimura voices Tyon, and he has been in a metric ton of media. The most relevant role of his currently is probably Tartaglia in Genshin Impact. The bio refers to his paper-like weapons as Katashiro. Katashiro are pretty much these paper dolls used as a substitution for a person or a thing used in purification rituals and to ward off negative effects like bad luck. This could have many implications for his character arc and the story as a whole. He's definitely the most mysterious of the party members. We're unsure of exactly what he is. Yeah, I'm sure he's probably a human or a Homs or something, but something just feels off about him. It says he's taken a liking to the Katashiro and has started calling them Mondo, which I really wonder has anything to do with the Monado, but probably not. It also means that he didn't always use them as a weapon and maybe found them somewhere. Guess what? He's 18. What a surprise. The next post reveals that Mio and Senna trust his insight and tactical judgment, and that he has sort of a short fuse. This next post doesn't really reveal anything, but I'll show it on screen for consistency's sake. This one, however, is very interesting. It shows both of these massive pieces of machinery that we saw in the trailer, and refers to them as mobile weapons called Iron Giants. There are apparently dozens of these scattered across both nations, and they each house independent units of soldiers. The ones that people live inside are called colonies, and are numbered just like in Xenoblade 1. Some colonies have different functions, for example, some might be better in terms of combat, and others might excel in weapon development. This is crazy. First of all, I love the callback to Xenoblade 1. Also, the fight in this scene is put into much greater context. The building could potentially house a battalion of soldiers on top of being a war machine, but Mio does mention there's a clock on it, so who really knows? This one is about the Vandom looking guy. He gives off the air of someone who knows more than he leads on. Based on this image that they posted later, he is definitely more of an enigma than we thought. Where does he come from, and what is his goal if he doesn't align with either nation? Maybe he's the leader of Ouroboros? Next, they named the two Nuppon in the trailer, Riku and Nana. These names are extremely similar to Riki and Nene, so maybe there's a relation? Although it could just be due to the limited ways in which Nuppon are typically named. It also describes Nana's hat as a chef's hat, but this looks way more like Poppy's hat to me. The way that they're talked about here makes it seem like they're most likely not party members like some of us thought, but this could be a misdirect. Finally, some eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that this image looks different in the post than in the trailer. It would seem that a different weather effect is happening in this screenshot. Maybe a sandstorm? The last post for now is this tiny affinity chart that's been translated by Milliam Man on Twitter. It gives us a bit of extra insight on the characters' relationships with their squadrons, as well as their possible roles in battle, which is nice. They're also not revealing that Melia and Nia are... well, Melia and Nia, which makes sense. We want a little bit of tension in case it turns out that they actually aren't them. This image in the background though, I can't make out what it is. I don't think it appears in the trailer at all either, so this is an entirely new scene. If anyone knows what this looks like, let me know in the comments. I hope you guys were enlightened at all during this video because I know I was. Xenoblade 3 is shaping up to be another fantastic release and a year full of them. By the time E3 rolls around, I know we're going to have even more information to analyze under a microscope, so be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my coverage on all of it. With that, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!